So, if you've been watching my streams, you might have noticed that for the better part of this year, I've been using a little bit of a uh, feature in the channel point system where you can change my clothes. And this here um, is possible with a little program that I wrote um, at the beginning of the year. Um, and in this video, um, I'd like to show how you can do this yourself. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I released the code for this little program. And, um, well, if you follow the instructions that are included in the file or in this video, you'll be able to do it yourself on your own streams on Twitch. Um, so uh, the first thing that's most important is that um, this only works on uh, the VTuber program that's called Live 2D Viewer X, uh, which probably isn't the most common one out there, but it's the one that I ended up picking when I switched to a Live 2D model instead of a, a 3D one. And uh, the key thing with this is that this supports uh, external connections, um, which is why it was possible for me to write the script that uh, lets me change my clothing. Um, so if you don't use this program, uh, you're a little bit out of luck um, and you will have to find another way or just switch to this program. Um, because, um, yeah, it's this program specifically that um, allowed me to actually change my clothes with a script. Uh, the second thing you have to do is um, actually download the code, which I've released on GitHub here. And all you have to do to download it is just press code here and just download the zip file. And then just extract it to wherever you want. Um, and in the folder, is right here, uh, you'll see a bunch of different files, which just lines up with what's over here. And the key thing um, is, uh, the, the key files here is a file called user data, which I've separated, so you only need to touch that file, and just index.html, which is just the web page. Uh, the main file here is where most of the operations take place and if you're interested in looking at it or modifying the code for yourself you can but uh, for the most part I've taken out all of the things that you do need to modify into user data.js um, but uh, yeah if you open up this HTML file um, it's not a fully complete program it's really more like a web page script just to make things even more lightweight and you'll get this little box here it tries to connect to uh, Twitch and live to the viewer X. Um, and uh, well, yeah, it doesn't work straight away because we need to actually configure both um, Twitch and live to the viewer X for um, this link up to actually work. On the live to the viewer X side, if you just open your control panel just by right clicking, just go into settings. Uh, in order to enable connections in the first place, um, you have to go into settings here and remote access and just open the server. Um, and uh, the port number can just be left to default um, because that's what I set it to. And that's all you need to do. On the Twitch side, it's a little bit more involved. So let's close that. So, in the user data.js file, um, the, the most of the instructions are here. And you're going to need to do two things. First, you need a login token, which you put into the text file, and uh, also the channel point name and the file, uh, the specific live to the model file uh, that you want things to switch to. And here I have. Uh, three filled in by default after downloading it, but you're going to want to fill it in yourself. Um, and there's also a copy of the instructions here if you really need them. Uh, the first thing you'll need to do is to generate an authorization token, uh, which expires in 60 days, um, and I can't really do anything else about it. And we're just going to get this uh, login token manually by going to this website here. And it's going to ask you to enter two things. The first one is a client ID. Uh, now, I've already created one here, which is uh, probably not something I'm supposed to do. But this is um, just the ID number for the app that I've made. 
Um, if you're not interested in um, using this client ID, um, you can create your own by just going to uh, dev.twitch.tv and then you can create your own apps and have your own um, app ID. But here I'm just going to paste it here and I'm just providing it to you. Um, if this client ID is invalid for some reason, it means I've deleted it. So you're going to have to go to um, dev.twitch.tv and just create it yourself. Uh, in scopes, uh, you're going to want to just copy paste this one, which is channel redemptions. And uh, for this, um, it's going to give you login permission to only read channel points. Um, there's lots of different permissions you can put in, um, depending on you know the kind of app, uh, the Twitch-related app that you might want to use, like in some other stuff. Um, but here, it's not even going to gain access to your email. It's just going to uh, read your um, channel point uh, rewards. You press connect there. And then you get an authorization token here. Now, I'm going to black this out on the actual video because this is not something you should be sharing. This is a unique password key, um, uh, which is only for you and is actually designated to your account. Uh, when you press connect in the previous page, um, it will actually ask uh, you if you want to connect uh, the app to your Twitch account because you know it's a bit of a security thing. So for, so for all of this, you should actually be logged into Twitch while you're doing this. So just copy that and then paste it into here. And then we'll just hide everything by scrolling down. Now for this part here, you're going to want to go to your channel point reward man management uh, screen in Twitch. And that, uh, the, the main thing that you want to copy is the exact name of the reward. So it's better for you to actually edit the custom reward and just copy paste the reward name because this reward name is what the program reads in order to know what to switch it to. So you get that and you paste it in here making sure that it's in between the quotes. Um, now, these ones here are already set up because I just copied it from my previous setup. And uh, you can have as many as you want here. Um, but, you know, the first one um, is the default one, which, is, uh, which I set aside as an extra button on the program. Um, for the directory here, all you have to do is just go to your model and just copy paste the directory and the location of the file. So just go up here, go up there, paste it, and also specifically copy the name of the model3.json file, which I've already typed in, but you're going to need to type in the whole thing, of course. Um, in order to make the script work, you're going to have to switch the slashes to the right direction as well. Change all the slashes. And with that, you're done with the actual program. Um, the next step after that, like everything's authorized and everything like that. The next thing after that is to actually run the HTML page. And there are two ways you can do, do this. Like it's, it's, it's just a HTML page with, a, with, it's just a web page with the script running. Uh, so you can just open this up in your web browser. Just by double clicking, it connects to Live Studio X, it connects to Twitch, um, and everything's authorized now. So if I go back here, um, you know, you can uh, switch it by sending a message here. Oh. 
And there you go. Um, but in order to make things more convenient, you're going to want to probably put this somewhere more convenient, such as directly in OBS. Uh, so if you open up OBS here, and just with whatever you want, um, what you can actually do to make this open up automatically, all that, you can actually add a custom browser doc, which is um, just an extra, you know, it's an extra program based on a web page. Um, and you can actually just take the URL from here. There's a specific special beginning here, which is file. So we'll just copy paste it from there, put it in there, and then give a special name to it. And there we go. And now this can be docked with um, OBS or when you open and close it, it'll just be there. And um, you can switch whenever you, you can, uh, you know, whenever you open up OBS, um, the channel point link will always be there. Like so. And there you go. Um, now, um, if uh, now there is one uh, bug per se, it's not really a bug, but um, if you do the channel point switch thing and your model disappears, like it doesn't switch but just disappears, you're going to want to just check. The, uh, the actual file name here to make sure it's typed in correctly. So if, because if it's invalid, um, instead of failing to load a new model and not switching, it's just gonna you know, load nothing and have your model disappear. So that's the only thing you should be concerned about. Um, but uh, other than that, go ahead and have some fun.